Hello everyone, this is uh, Sebastian Sterzer, Head of International Relations Area for the Observatory of International Trade at the National University of Luján in Buenos Aires, Argentina. In this opportunity, we are very welcome to receive a very special uh, interview for us, which is uh, Mr. Uh, Jarek Suchoples. Please correct me if the pronunciation is, is, uh, is wrong. Uh, so we are going to proceed with a few questions about uh, how is the situation with the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in Europe, particularly in the Finland and Poland, and uh, how is the situation about the education, the economic activity, the social life, among other things. But uh, I don't want to waste time, and uh, please, uh, Mr. Jarek, uh, welcome to, to our interview, welcome for us to our radio. Please, if you can, uh, introduce by yourself for the audience. So, good afternoon. Uh, as you almost correctly said, my name is Jarek Suhoples. Okay. Uh, currently, I work in Finland. I am a senior researcher at the University of Iveskil at the Department of Music, Art and uh, Cultural Studies. I am also a former ambassador of Poland in this country. And uh, my whole career is connected mainly with with academic world and also with Finland. I think that Finland is my speciality. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for your kindly introduction. So uh, we are start with the first uh, question that uh, you know already. Uh, what could be the first question is about the the situation with COVID-19, the pandemic uh, in Europe, particularly, we are interested to know. We already know how is the situation, uh, mainly in Italy, Spain, France, and the United Kingdom. But uh, we are interested to know your, your feelings about what is happening so far in countries like uh, Finland and Poland, considering your uh, backgrounds, your, your experience. Huh? Uh, okay, so uh, my feeling is that uh, Finland is doing pretty well with the current crisis. Um, but a uh, couple uh, factors works, uh, work for Finland, I would say. First of all, we must remember that this country is uh, scarcely populated. This is the least, uh, I mean, uh, the country with which is uh, the most scarcely populated in uh, in Europe. The country is as big as, let us say, Germany or uh, or uh, Great Britain in this range, let us say, but it is populated only by 5.5 million people. Mm -hmm. And if we take into consideration that uh, more than one million and a half live in the capital city of Helsinki and its uh, direct surroundings, uh, we can say that the uh, remaining part of the country is relatively empty, which of course, in times of uh, pandemic, it is it is uh, advantageous factor. Mm -hmm. Besides, uh, you know, some social habits, Finns love to keep uh, a uh, pretty big social distance. Mm -hmm. I mean, when people wait for a bus at the bus stop, they stay uh, really far from each other. It's not like two meters, it's, it's even more. On the, on the other hand, there are also some other factors which plays for Finland. Um, well, it's a well-organized country, and uh, in my opinion, it's important also Finland's historical experience. I mean, this country always lived in the shadow of, in modern times, in of Soviet Union or Russia, and in uh, its strategic planning, the Finns always maintained that one day they could be militarily attacked by from from the east by the Russians. So they were prepared 
and they are prepared for some major crisis. And now, of course, uh, we uh, we haven't here war, fortunately, but we have a struggle with some invisible enemy, I mean, with the virus. But fortunately, it is not so uh, difficult like uh, coping with the real war. Yes, we have no attacks against uh, key infrastructure. We have no bombings, no uh, real uh, big casualties among population. Uh, so we can say that uh, this crisis is easier from uh, from the point of view of the country, which is well prepared for for a military confrontation. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, if the Finns would need to <coughs> to uh, develop two or three or five uh, field military hospitals, they would do in a few hours because this is a well-trained uh, procedure. And here we also touched another problem. They have procedures. Mm -hmm. This is a very important thing. Everything is clear for the population. I mean, orders from above. And the population uh, possess a kind of trust towards, towards administration. This is very important, you know, this feedback. Mm -hmm. Administration knows what to do because uh, they rely on experts and population trust administration. This is a very important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in other countries in Europe, the situation is different. I mean, different, different in each country. Each country is uh, um, an example and it's a different example. For example, in Poland, uh, we have much more people, about 40 million, 38. And uh, currently, uh, uh, the situation is a little bit more chaotic because uh, besides coping with uh, the virus, mm -hmm. we also have a pretty complicated political situation. And this uh, political situation definitely influences uh, efforts uh, and, and the battling uh, the virus. Okay, I see. Very interesting point. Uh, um, talking about coming back to, to Finland, and um, this is very particular in, interesting for us as uh, academician, for our university, for our students. We always see and <coughs> in Finland about the uh, excellence, about the education, the, the quality, the its system. We were watching already like a too many documentaries, so we would like to, to get from you your point of view about uh, precisely the Finnish education. Uh, so, how in this in this particular moment, no? how that uh, the, the Finnish education was being affected because of COVID-19? Uh, what were schools and universities doing uh, to keep learning process going on? You know, uh, the situation is really very problematic, but not very different from the situation in other countries. For example, my university, we, I can, I can uh, use this example because I know it the best. Simply, simply is uh, locked down. I mean, we were ordered to work at home. And uh, the situation is a little bit more complicated in a moment because uh, we are approaching the end of the academic year and uh, there are problems uh, with enrollment and uh, problems with final examinations. So, uh, you know, with enrollment there is not such a big deal because everything can be done online. This is also a kind of uh, Finnish speciality that this country is uh, highly electronized, so to say, and people people know how to do many things online. For example, uh, now Finland uh, is one of these countries which contemplate that maybe it would be not quite uh, unfair to give up the cash money because everybody is, is, uh, is using cards, using uh, applications and so on. And money, you know, the real money, I mean the cash, can also transmit virus. 
So this is, you know, this is this speciality. But of course, it cannot be done overnight. Countries like Finland or Estonia, for example, mm -hmm. uh, so to say, train uh, to be to be uh, online country for many many years, almost one generation uh, passed since uh, these ideas were developed here or in Estonia, as I as I used this example. The other thing is that this country, which, which is also important, I mean, important in case of fighting the virus, but also education, is rather centralized country. So it's relatively easy in a crisis situation to give orders and to execute them. When we compare the situation, for example, with Sweden, and we know that Sweden adopted a different way to battle the crisis situation, I was trying to understand why the Swedes are so different. And the problem is that their political, I mean, internal, internal political system is very different. It's very decentralized. And in fact, the government has no real tools, uh, I mean, legal tools, to influence local government. Uh, in many cases, simply they, they are not able to give orders. So their, their approach towards, towards epidemic had to be different. Mm -hmm. we, of course, we don't know what will be the final outcome, but uh, authorities in all countries uh, must use tools which they have. And here in Finland, also in education, they can simply give orders. Of course, it is not like that, that uh, these orders uh, can be given with uh, violation of rules and democratic procedures. Uh, but uh, the law, which works here pretty well, <coughs> allows uh, authorities in a crisis situation to uh, to do uh, and to perform uh, effectively against possible danger for the good of the society. But of course, without the social trust, it would not work. It is, you know, two-way uh, two communication, two-way um, management of crisis, I would say. Mm -hmm. And here in, in, in education, of course, we don't know what will be the impact of the current situation. Anyway, at the moment, the Finns try to manage everything which they can online. Of course, it's, it, it, cannot, it cannot be, uh, everything cannot be managed online, but as far as they can. For example, when, when I uh, developed a new course, which I will have with students, uh, I should start it in October. Already today, I know the time and place of my meetings with students in October. So mm -hmm. the system works. The system works. Well, of course, we will see what will be the final result because we never, we have never coped with this kind of crisis. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when uh, you you mentioned already like some uh, initiatives from from the government, especially from Finland. Uh, also, do you explain something about Sweden, uh, Poland as well? So, but do you know maybe more about the um, economic initiatives or initiatives to support the uh, the small and medium companies, or or maybe the the other question should be. Um, what are the the main um, for the main economic activities in Finland? This is just uh, I think our introduction for us. If you can give us an introduction about the main industries in Finland and if these industries uh, these are industries are, are being affected, how the government were supported them. So you see. Uh... Finnish economy is the economy based on uh, services and knowledge. Mm. And of course, uh, services are badly affected because um, a lot of services, not all, but many of them, uh, based on direct contact. 
So the problem is that uh, in this country, in this country, in this among this nation, which is 5.5 million strong, uh, about 300,000 people can le can uh, lose job. So it is really a big problem. But uh, government uh, more or less knows or proposes how to make the situation easier. I will give just one, maybe not the best example, but uh, I I think it's pretty illustrative. Because now uh, prices of oil uh, dropped dramatically. The Finns came to the conclusion that it's a very good time to repair all roads in this country. So, uh, because material is cheap, I mean asphalt, which is also which is also produced from from oil, and many people can lose job. So you see, this is that kind of thinking. This some some possibilities are closed at the moment because we had to cool the economy, we had to close some sectors, we have problems with education and so on. But this situation also opened other possibilities, which result from organization of the state. And I would like, I don't want to idealize the situation. This country is also not perfect, but uh, they are masters in converting the crisis situation, emergency situation in a success situation. And uh, I hope that that uh, in few uh, in few uh, years, because everybody is saying that uh, the economical crisis will last some time. I have heard different opinions about the situation, economic situation in Europe. That maybe three years, maybe five years, maybe a generation. So, and in fact, nobody knows because because we still cope with the situation, which is affected by many, many factors, also factors we still do not know today. Mm -hmm. And but anyway, uh, in in Finland, the government tries to help people and uh, to show how they can find alternatives. And of, but of course, without direct financial support, uh, it would not be possible. It is also an important part of uh, this program of protection and recovery. Okay. Could you please um, give me your opinion about the European Union in this moment? Did the European Union members um, working um, actively together in order to help help each other, or, or you you find like uh, some uh, difficulties in order to doing so? I would I would say that there are pretty many difficulties, but. Uh, there are difficulties which appeared because of earlier uh, wrong decisions of member state member states. What what I mean? Today everybody complain in Europe that oh European Union is doing too little for the common uh, policy in a current situation. But people easily forget that. Uh, uh, the question of medical services, uh, medical protection of uh, population of European Union was excluded, deliberately excluded from the pool of decisions of European Union. Why? Because member states did not want it. So today people complain, but they forget that uh, this is a result of earlier decisions which were made on the purpose that member states simply did not want to uh, to share uh, I mean that that decisions concerning medical uh, protection uh, medical system medical services were excluded from decisions of European Union so so we have a kind of paradox if we if we made earlier wiser decisions, now the situations would be easier. But 
Of course, countries of European Union tried to help each other. For example, Germany uh, accepted many uh, patients, many sick people from Italy in, in, uh, in uh, German hospitals. The same uh, German, uh, German uh, services helped to test people in border areas with Poland, etc., etc. But they are only examples because well, I don't know, for example, how uh, how uh, they cooperate very locally. And I am, but I am sure. I I don't know, but I am sure that, for example, border cities cooperate with each other because it is in interest of everybody. Mm. And they are some sometime local government knows much better what they need locally. Okay, uh, this is another issue. Um, for some time ago, uh, we are reading much information about the geopolitics, the US-China trade war, and uh, the new world that uh, apparently is coming to because of the pandemic. Do you think uh, we are going through a new period of instability, a new order? This is a very difficult question because we still don't know what will be the outcome of this crisis situation. And uh, we don't know how long this crisis situation will last. If it is according to some optimistic uh, forecasts, just a few years, I mean two, three, four years, which today also seem to be pre a pretty long time, uh, the crisis can be can be short or shorter. But uh, using again an example of Finland, yes, if we calculate that among such a small nation, 5.5, million, almost 300 people, 300,000 people will lose jobs. It is a real problem. And uh, I think that uh, many countries like the United States, also China, uh, but also South American countries, they will try to protect their own markets. But these decisions concerning protection cannot be made without uh, view of the general situation. Because uh, if we take away from this whole puzzle, such a big one puzzle like the American economy or Chinese economy or economy of South America, we will, we will make probably more trouble than advantage. So we still must uh, be very careful with, I mean, political and economical uh, policy makers must, must be very careful. And I would advise only one thing, cooperate with each other. Okay. Not fight, cooperate. Mm -hmm. So, well, this is the, the last uh, question or, or ask for you, um, because I am particularly interested about your current project about uh, history and memory on World War I and II. Could you explain for us a little more about this? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, uh, you know, um, I started these projects a good couple of years ago, and uh, because uh, at that time, around anniversaries of the outbreak of the First World War and the Second World War, and also the conclusion of uh, both these conflicts were coming. So the idea was that uh, uh, relatively wide pool of specialists should write uh, their contributions. And we also organized conferences. Uh, the idea was that uh, specialists from such or so different countries like, for example, Brazil and, and Indonesia, where you are now, could uh, prepare their contributions just to allow a broader audience to understand how far-going, far-reaching conflicts there they were 
and how uh, people in different places of the world uh, were affected. Sometimes uh, it was very different, but it was different and similar in, in the same in the, at the same time. Uh, people were suffer suffering everywhere. And uh, the other thing, the other idea was that in fact, the first world war and especially the second world war was the first really global experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is pos even possible that uh, the second world war was uh, an event which was the first true event of globalization in the very negative way, but still. And um, we were really successful. I can even show this is the Second World War book. Oh, okay, interesting. Which is pretty thick. Yes, I, a, I see. <laughs> a real brick. And uh, we are pretty successful with these two projects. So colleagues from around the world, from very different countries, approached me again and they told me, ah, you know, maybe we could continue. But continue with what? So, and, and a kind of a natural continuation would be now the Cold War. So, uh, despite the current crisis situation, uh, I'm trying to to uh, to manage this big project and to coordinate, which is not easy when you when you deal with a group of scholars from from different countries and different continents. Anyway, I have nobody from Argentina. Why? Why I would like to invite also colleagues from Argentina. I have some colleagues in Mexico. I have some colleagues in Brazil, but not in under, uh, Argentina. So anybody from Argentina is mostly welcome to participate in this scheme. Thank you. Thank you. OK, Mr. Janek, thank you so much for the kindly interview. Thank you for, for your time, for joining us and uh, hopefully we can have another interview in the short term for sure. Eh? Thank you so much for all. Thank you very much. Take care. Okay, bye bye.